Uh, for those of you who are new, you can find us at the naturalfertilityshop.com and naturalfertilityinfo.com. For those of you who are back and who've been here before, welcome back and thanks for joining again. Um, today I'm going to talk about four everyday causes of hormonal imbalance because last night I went on a walk with my family. It's finally spring where I live in the Midwest. The snow is gone, the ice is off the lakes, everyone's outside and waking up and the plants are growing so um, we have spent a lot more time outside but I was walking through our park which is a really substantially sized park. It's pretty big. It has a small pond in it that people can canoe and paddle board or um, paddle boat on. There's a nice path around it and lots of big trees and lots of wild plants and herbs growing. Actually I, I harvest some herbs from this park. There's a play space but along both sides there are houses. Um, it's urban. We're in the middle of the city. <laughs> And along both sides are houses and I was walking through the park, enjoying the sound of the birds and watching my boys ride their bikes and it was really fun. And then I got this humongous whiff of chemical smell and I'm pretty sure it was dryer sheets, conventional dryer sheets. And I thought to myself, you know what, I need to talk again so that this information gets out there about how harmful some of these things are to us, particularly those of us who want um, all of us really, but particularly those of you who are on this journey to um, optimal reproductive wellness and fertility health, who are trying to conceive, who are battling fertility issues, who are dealing with hormonal imbalance. So I'm going to talk again about four really everyday common uh, things that impact or negatively impact hormonal balance. And the first one is plastic. I'll get to the stinky part of things in a little bit <laughs> that prompted me to talk about this, but the first one I want to talk about is plastic. Plastics are made with chemicals, plastic bottles, um, food storage containers, all sorts of different things um, are made with chemicals known as xenohormones. These xenohormones are um, hormone disrupting. They disrupt your body's ability to produce, deliver, and uh, properly um, eliminate or metabolize its natural hormones. Uh, xenohormo xenohormones are really strong. They cling to hormone receptor sites and they interfere with your body's natural hormones. Um, preventing them from keeping things balanced for you and throwing things very off whack. Plastics are really bad. Try to switch to glass, stainless steel, um, do not microwave any food in plastic, and try to, if you can, purchase all fats including animal products in something other than plastic. Um, you can go and get meat, if you're a meat eater, directly from the meat counter. They wrap in a paper uh, most of the time. Um, avoid styrofoam at all costs. If you use things like olive oil or coconut oil or any other oil, grain oil particularly, by butter, things like, by milk, um, things like that, try to purchase them in uh, some sort of paper wrap or anything other than plastic. Um, the next number two is conventional body care products and cleaning products and the things that we use in our homes. Now you're gonna, th you would think, like we say, um, or like you read, that these products are supposed to make us all beautiful. Well, they really, most conventional body care products, while they can help do that, uh, also contain a lot of chemicals. Um, the list is endless, but um, parabens, phthalates, triclosan, um, petrochemicals, lead, synthetic colors, and scents. Um, and all of these things can soak into our body, into our bloodstream, through our skin. And particularly when you are just after you get out of a shower. I, um, I love to smell good, as many people do. I love to be clean. I love a yummy scented soap or shampoo. But when you're in the shower and that warm, steamy air and water is helping your pores open up and you're slathering on conventional body care, body cleaning products, it's all getting soaked into your skin. And likewise, after you get out, um, even when your pores are closed, you can slather on some, you know, beautifully scented lotion. And uh, if it's a conventional lotion and it's filled with all of these ingredients that you can't pronounce, let alone, um, you know, know where they come from, it's soaking into your skin. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, so please try to transition to natural body care products. Um, find a local artisan near you that uses clean ingredients and ask them why they're clean and what makes the product a good thing. Um, pure essential oils from plants are fine. Um, products made with soy wax and coconut wax. Um, you might not have liked that soy thing, but soy wax isn't the most worst thing in the world. Beeswax, of course. 
um, all sorts of things like coconut and jojoba and carrot seed oil and there are so many different really great healthy ingredients that body care products can be made of. Visit a Whole Foods, visit a co-op, visit a natural body care place um, store if you have one near you. Do your research. Go to the Environmental Working Group website, ewg.org, and research what are clean body care products. And then try to also transition your cleaning products, particularly if you clean your own home um, and you do so regularly. Um, Avoid those icky scented dryer sheets. They really are awful. They sure may make your clothes soft, but there are other things that can do the same thing like natural wool dryer balls. Um, and there may be others that I'm just not thinking of, but those dryer sheets and that um, la laundry soap that's conventional and has a super song strong smell that you can smell out in nature when you're walking around your neighborhood or through the park are terrible try to avoid those. All of those contain chemicals, um, I mentioned some at the beginning of this step, um, that can disrupt hormonal balance. Um, the third thing that you may not know, but maybe you do, I'm not sure, is extreme exercise. Exercise is an everyday thing we should be doing, but extreme exercisers tend to have disrupted hormones, hormonal imbalance. I know that there are that exercise is important. It's important to stay lean and fit for the entirety of your health, also your fertility health. But there is a max when it comes to hormonal balance, and studies are proving that women that are um, over exercisers, chronic <laughs> chronic isn't the word, extreme exercisers um, often have less body fat and are leaner and maybe underweight. And body fat is something that we need healthy amounts of to produce hormones and keep our hormones regulated. Um, women who are underweight, have a low body mass index or BMI, often experience absent cycles, absent periods and absent menstrual cycles. And it, it might not be something long term, but it could be periodic. They often experience anovulation and low levels of estrogen, progesterone, and um, there's another one, thyroid hormones. So um, if you are wondering if your exercise routine might Ha be having an impact on your hormonal balance, particularly if you're experiencing some sort of hormonal balance, it might be time to scale back a little bit. And what you can do, we definitely want you exercising. 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise five days a week is in general the suggestion, but for some women can go seven days. It's not, this is not hard and fast, but br a brisk walk or light jogging, um, Nia, Zumba, aerobics two to three times a week, swimming, dancing, um, leisurely bike riding, uh, even some weightlifting is fine. Um, we certainly want you getting um, strength training and cardio in, but not to, the, not to the max. So if you wanna talk to a trainer, do that. If you go to a gym, most gyms have trainers. You might wanna talk to them or talk to your doctor or um, come on our informational website. We've got a few articles about um, what, what's enough exercise, what's not enough and what's too much. So do, do a little bit of research. And the fourth one, which I'm sure you all are aware of, particularly if you've been on this journey for some time, because we talk about it all the time, but I need to talk about it again, is organic food. Um, Non-organic food. Non-organic food is an everyday cause of hormonal imbalance, particularly those foods that are on the dirty dozen list. Um, they are often um, grains, produce, berries particularly, but apples even, so grains, produce, nuts, and seeds. Um, these things are often grown with pesticides and herbicides and um, chemical fertilizers all to, um, you know, keep them safe. They're delicious. Bugs love them. Why not put a pesticide on it to keep them off? But all of those things, herbicides, pesticides, and chemical fertilizers um, are endocrine disruptors. Um, they disrupt the healthy function of the system in the body that's responsible for our hormone production, distribution, and metabolism, hormonal balance. Um, as I talked earlier, these things are xenohormones. They disrupt that healthy, that necessary balance of hormones. So again, um, choose the dirty dozen organic always. There are 12 foods that are known to be most sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and fertilizers. Find them. That information is everywhere, including our website. Always choose organic, grass-fed, uh, free-range animal products. That's incredibly important too. Um, conventional animals are often given 
synthetic things to make them grow faster, quicker, so they can get, you know, so they can be processed and put on our shelves, to the shelves of the grocery store, um, a little bit quicker. Um, what else? Try to purchase products made from grains that are um, non-GMO always. Um, it seems a little bit daunting, but this this list is not everything you eat if you can't purchase organic everything organic. Um, so things like um, any sort of oil from a grain, any sort of um, you know flour you purchase, um, any grain that you would eat, try to choose non-GMO. Um, the amount or it, the um, the number of GMO foods um, made into the foods that we eat, which are often processed, which we want you to avoid anyway, um, is growing, sadly. Um, so try to choose non-GMO. GMO foods are linked to elevated estrogen levels in women, and we know that women on this fertility journey, and men too actually, often don't need that, um, need that at all. Uh, excess estrogen and these xeno you know, hormones and chemicals have been found to actually be stored in your body fat. Um, now I said we need some amount of body fat for healthy hormone production, and that is true. Healthy, healthy cholesterol production, and that is very true. Um, so you want to be avoiding all of these extra chemicals and xenohormones because they can get stored even in your healthy amounts of body fat, even if you're not overweight, and slowly released into the body over time. Um, just kind of a sort of a scary thing to think about, but it does happen, and um, is just worthy of paying attention to and, and um, being aware of when you're dealing with hormonal imbalance. So those are my four things, plastics, conventional body care, and um, you know home care products, over-exercising, and non-organic foods. Um, I know that for those of you who have been with us for quite some time, you've heard those things before, but I think it's important to talk about again, um, even in slightly a different way, because it's still happening, as I shared in the very beginning, um, smelling these crazy, strong um, um, dryer sheets in my walk through the park, which wasn't a cool thing. So try to start making transitions where you can. You don't have to swap everything out overnight if that's not your personality or if that's not your in your budget, um, but start making slow changes as you can, a few things at a time. Um, start doing your research and, and going to the store with a little bit of time to smell the natural products and look at the natural products and see which ones best fit your family's needs. All right, thank you everyone for joining today. It was really great talking with you. And I hope that you have a great rest of your week. Happy weekend, and um, we'll see you next week. All right, bye.